Joined now by Nathan Baird, who covers Boilermaker football for the Lafayette Journal and Courier. Nathan, what's the most intriguing storyline heading into this weekend spring game? Well, I think it's Purdue needing to sort of find some playmakers on offense. You know, that's when Jeff Brom took over this program and brought in his Western Kentucky uh, coaching staff. Um, that was what was supposed to kind of come along with it was a really explosive offense. Uh, but right now, from a personnel standpoint, I don't really know if, if Purdue can live up to that. Um, you know, they've, they've got some talent in the backfield. Obviously, people know about Markel Jones. DJ Knox is coming back. They got some other running backs that um, a really kind of versatile group there. And people know David Blau from, from some of the numbers he put up last year, and this will be his third year as a starter going into the fall. But what we don't really know yet is who's going to settle in as the starters on this offensive line. Uh, center Kirk Barron is the only returning starter, so they have some guys up there that really have to prove themselves for the first time. And then this receiving core, you know, they lost – uh, four senior receivers last year, guys who were their most dependable guys, and they're still trying to find out who from that group is going to stand out. I will say that they have, they do know that they're, they have a couple tight ends, uh, Cole Herman and Bryce Hopkins, that are dependable guys and I think will be used a lot this year, but they need to sort of find some more vertical threats and some uh, consistency out of those slot receivers too. What will Jeff Brom be asking David Blau to do this year? Well, I think he's just got to be more efficient. You know, last year you look at his numbers and he threw for a lot of yards and a good number of touchdowns, but that came with a lot of attempts and it came with a lot of interceptions. Uh, he's going to have to make better decisions this year. I think the margin for error is going to be as smaller or smaller as than it was last year. Um, this defense looks like it could be getting a little bit better, but um, that's something that they really put the pressure on their defense last year when they turned the ball over because it was still an offense that it had some big play possibilities, but when injuries set in with that offensive line, they, they really struggled to maybe consistently move the ball at times. So um, he's got to just be a more efficient player. He's got to cut down on those turnovers, and he's got to you know keep the chains moving and keep that completion percentage high. We've seen several players expected to be contributors on the sidelines with injuries during spring practice. How much will those injuries affect what we actually see this weekend? Yeah, you know, we, we think Markel Jones is going to play at least a little bit this weekend. Um, they have some other guys, Matt McCann, who's an important offensive lineman who hasn't been in the mix, uh, and a few other guys. But, but really, this spring for, for Purdue was about, you know, building depth um, and about maybe identifying some guys who'd been overlooked before who hadn't had that chance necessarily to break through because they were behind guys. And, you know, this coaching staff has, I think, done a pretty good job of sort of reevaluating some, some players. You're seeing guys like, uh, someone like Rob Simmons, who is still, he's working with the second unit, but was a defensive end when he came in. They moved him to, to linebacker because they think his athleticism will work there. They brought in some grad transfers. Uh, TJ McCallum um, from Western Kentucky is going to really bolster what was already a pretty good linebacking core. Um, TJ Jallo is a safety that has been delivering big hits, even in practice, kind of even when he's not supposed to be sometimes against his teammates. Uh, so there's, they're, they're finding some, some talent. Now it's just a matter of, you know, I think this spring game and this whole spring for them has sort of been like establishing a new baseline, installing a new offense, new defense, and sort of uh, let, laying a platform for this program to sort of work on into the offseason. And it's my understanding Brom has decided on going with a ones versus ones, twos versus twos format as opposed to the more traditional drafting teams and letting them go at it. Why do you think he's using that option? Well, you know, the way he explained it was that they want their best guys going against their best guys as much as possible. I, I understand that. I think that I think there's something to be said for the the the, the prior approach. I mean, it, there's, there's a camaraderie aspect to it. I've been in that room when they do the draft every year and the players get a kick out of it, who they're picking. And there's a little strategy sometimes to, to picking certain guys and not leaving the other team with certain positions that are very strong, things like that. Uh, I think the players always thought that was fun, but they're obviously in a different scenario here. I mean, you know, the, this program needs to be turned around. Uh, there's been maybe a little bit more of a business-like approach to, to things like this. So I think they wanted to see, you know, th they still don't know in some cases who their best 11 guys are on each side of the ball. That's an important thing for them to figure out. They don't, obviously, they don't start the season next week, but they want to get a better idea of that as they go into the offseason and know which players need to work on, you know, various aspects of their game. So I think they want those – those the, what they think are their best guys going head to head right now to sort of test some of the, the theories that they have right now. Really good stuff on all things Boilermaker football from Nathan Baird. Nathan, as always, appreciate the time. Absolutely. Thanks a lot.